Welcome back everybody, How to Tech Studio here, and I'm going to be showing you how you can spoof your Pokemon Go on any device using iPogo. Now make sure before you get started, hit that big red subscribe button and set up the notification bell to show your support and to get the latest news for iPogo spoofing. We are the best go-to place to get your news. Now, a couple of things to go through before we get going, and I'm going to start with that this is a PC tutorial. Now, the reason is, if you've already watched our channel before, TutuBox, App Valley, AppCake, these sorts of third-party apps no longer work, okay? Apple are really closing down on them, and basically, they're going to start stop, they're going to stop signing the apps soon. And at the moment, App Valley is the only place that has uh, iPogo. However, they've inserted a Dlib into it, which basically crashes on, on launch. So yes, you might be able to download it, but it doesn't actually work anyway. So this is the only working method as of right now. However, in the future, there might be a new method. So make sure you hit that subscribe button to get that notification as soon as new updates come about. What we're going to do first is make sure that your device is all set up, ready to go. And then I'm going to show you step by step on how to get iPogo on your device. We're going to go through step by step, so make sure you take take note of everything we do and make sure that you do it exactly how I do it because people are saying this step doesn't work, that step doesn't work, this error comes up and so on. So make sure you stay tuned because we're going to go through every little detail. So without any further ado, let's go ahead and get this done. What we're going to do is delete off iPogo off of my device. And the very first thing you're going to need to do is make sure that you are on the latest iOS version. Okay, so update your device so that it is on the latest version. Next up, you're going to need to make sure that you're plugged into your computer. And I'm using Windows 10 here. So Windows 10 definitely works. Windows less, so Windows 8 and less, I'm not so sure. All right, so Windows 10 is always your best bet. And you should have Windows 10 anyway. Next up, you're going to need to make sure that you have iTunes and iCloud installed as a direct install. Now, what I mean by that is sometimes you can install iTunes and iCloud via Windows Store. You do not want this, so make sure that you've got these done. You can go to the link in the description to get these. I'm going to show you exactly what you need to do. So if you go to iTunes for Windows, and then if you scroll down and it says here, get it from Microsoft, do not use that one. Okay, that is the Windows Store version. We don't want that. Scroll down to where you see Windows. You can click on that and get the Windows version that matches your PC. You could do exactly the same for iCloud. Now, when you've got it, make sure that iTunes is signed in and iCloud is also signed in. You need to make sure that also your device is trusted by your computer. So if your device isn't trusted, if you haven't got the correct iTunes and iCloud, then this will not work. You will get errors in the future. That is the reason why. Next thing you're going to need to do is download 3U tools. So 3U.com, all the link will be in the description. All you need to do is click on the download button. The download will appear in the bottom left, run it and install it. Really free, really simple, and it's all good to go. So once you've done that, the one last thing you're going to need to do is get iPogo itself. So you need to go to iPogo.app and this is where you're going to get iPogo. Now pay attention to where it says the version number. That may change in the future, okay? So if, for example, Niantic bring out an update, iPogo will then be out of date and you won't be able to play. So you need to make sure that you are keeping up to date on this. If, you, if there is an update, you would then need to delete your iPogo and re-download this and reinstall using these same steps. So what I would do is save this video to watch and then you can get these steps going in the future. You will also need to re-sign this app every seven days, but something I'll talk about later on. So your first thing you're going to need to do is click on download IPA. Now, make sure that you know where this is downloaded to. On my device, it saves to my desktop. However, it might save to your downloads folder or wherever you have installed it to. So if you right click on it and then say show in folder, it will then show you where it has downloaded to. All right. So make sure that you know exactly where it has downloaded to. And it shouldn't take too long depending on your internet connection. So now that we've got three U2s installed and your iPogo is ready to go, keep your device logged in and I'm going to show you what to do now. So go ahead and open up three U tools and then you will see that it's connecting to your device and make sure it is connected, collected and there is a tick just to go. Okay, now this will tell you all about your device so it doesn't really matter what you're doing for now. What you're going to do is go on to toolbox and you're going to find IPA signature. It may be in here, all right, so just more tools. You can also search for it, or it might be in common tools if you've used it before. 
you're going to click on IPA signature. You're then going to add IPA files, and then you're going to find the IPOGO. Remember, mine is signed. To, uh, mine is on my desktop. Yours could also be in downloads, for example. It is wherever it's been saved, and that's very important for where it is. Now, pay attention to the name. All right, and the name is going to change once we have imported a certificate, and I'll explain that in a second. So, click on IPA and click open. You're going to click to make sure that it is clicked. And then you're going to go sign with Apple ID and then add Apple ID. Now you need to put in a real Apple ID and password because what happens is each app needs a certificate in order to log in and not crash. Okay, so basically, when we've installed before on any other sort of Tutu Box, App Valley, whatever they might be, they use a certificate that is basically from an enterprise or a company. This way, we are signing ourselves. Now, you need to listen very carefully to this bit. iPogo will be signed after this for seven days. After seven days, it will stop working. All right, it will say it's either unable to open or it'll crash or it's just unable. This means that you are going to have to redo these steps every seven days. Delete the app off of your device and then install. One more thing before that we do this, make sure that any iPogo is deleted or uh, Pokemon Go, any version of it is deleted from your device before we do this. All right. So once you've put in your Apple ID and password, don't worry, it's not going to hack you or anything like that. It literally just signs the app. Click confirm. And then when you click on your device, so click on the Apple ID, make sure that this is ticked, make sure this is ticked, and then click start signing. Now, this is the bit you need to make sure you follow, okay? If there's any two-factor authentication on your device, just put in the allow or press it or type in the six-digit code that comes up and just wait for it to go. If there's any errors here, then you have not followed any of the previous steps correctly. You need to double check you've got your iTunes and iCloud done. You might actually want to have them open. I don't have them open, it works fine, but for you, you might need to. Make sure everything's updated and basically follow all of those steps we've gone through before. If you don't, you might get an error here if it says something about data set or uh, Xcode or there's another one, Anis set, something like that. If you get any errors, then you go back to the video and make sure you've got all of the steps done first. Now, as you can see, signature succeeded, so we're all good to go. Now, close out here, and then you're going to go back to iDevice, go down to Apps, and then Import and Install IPA. Now, again, this is going to open up where it was installed before, where I downloaded it. Again, if you've downloaded it to uh, my downloads, for example, might be a case. What you'll do is you'll see that there's a little number one in a bracket there. That one is the one that has been signed. So your Apple ID has signed that IPA. So click on that and then click open. And you'll see that it's starting to transmit. At this stage, I always like to have my device open. Um, just to make sure that it definitely does it, but it shouldn't really matter. If you have an error here that says device unjailbroken, this means that you haven't signed it properly. You've either not signed it or you've chosen the wrong iPogo IPA. You need to make sure that you've done the signing process that we just did first perfectly in order for this to work. If you haven't, it will then not work. However, if you have, then it will work. And it, as you can see, is working on my device. So now let's go over to the device. What you're going to need to do is scroll across to where you see settings, scroll down to general, all the way down to device management, and you will see that your Apple ID username is there. So tap on that and then click trust and then trust. You are now all good to go to open up iPogo. It might crash the first time or it might just open straight away. My, my one crashed. I'm going to open it up again and it then works seamlessly. All right. So you need to make sure that you followed all of these steps. Now, pay attention to what happens next. All right. You can allow your stuff. I'm going to sign in and I'm going to explain a little bit about iPogo, the settings you need and how to do cool down periods and how to actually spoof safely. If you would like to, we already have dedicated videos for this in our channel and in the descriptions. Go ahead and check those out or stay tuned. And I'm going to show you a little bit more. All right. So you can put in your username and your password just like so, and then click sign in. As you can see, obviously the whole iPogo uh, part, oh, I did it wrong. The iPogo, uh, the user interface is all there down this left-hand side and the right-hand side. So let's go ahead and do this now. There we go, sign in, that's better. So 
as you can see, it's clearly working. It logged me all in. Yep, you can uh, you can send me some notifications if you want to. Wait for this. We've got some Halloweeny sort of thing going on. Uh, I don't want my camera on. And then it has spoofed me to my current location. If you're in a random place, then don't worry and don't panic. I'm going to show you what to do here. So as you can see, there's no joystick at the moment. So first things first, we're going to tap, tap on the iPogo settings. Go down to settings, scroll down until you see joystick dynamic slash static and turn that on. Okay, that will then give you your joystick in order to make you move. But what you'll find is you'll walk very, very slowly at the beginning. So now tap on the iPogo symbol, tap on, tap on speed, and I like to put, have it on 25 to allow me to walk around. Now, it's up to you. Now, this is your choice. If you are where you are currently, right now, the servers at Niantic's level Think that you're here. If you then want to go and spoof somewhere else, if you then tap on here, for example, go to favorite, go to hotspot, and then I'm going to choose one of these. I like Pier 39. Click teleport, and then it teleports me to Pier 39, San Francisco. Just because that I'm already here, this all this was this will then work for me. However, this is then going to cause something called a cooldown or a soft ban. So if I start interacting with Pokemon and and uh, Pokestops, then I would get something called a soft ban. And that basically means that Niantic servers have gone, hang on a minute, you've gone from one place to another. You've gone, you've traveled 11,000 miles in a single second. That's not possible. We're going to put a ban on your account. Now, it's not a hard ban. It's a soft ban, which basically means you, you, that your account will resume normality after about two hours. But sometimes it can take 24 hours. In order for this not to happen, what you need to do is check out the links in the description on how to spoof Pokemon safely and understand how to work out these cooldown periods and so on. But as you can see, this is all working perfectly fine and I can teleport around everywhere and then I could go and capture some Pokemon if I wanted to. So let's go ahead and try and capture this Wisma. Let's go ahead, try and catch it. Hopefully it will catch first time. That would be quite nice for this tutorial. Dulu. And lovely, there we go. All right, so it clearly works, guys. I'm clearly not in P39 San Francisco, and it works seamlessly. Remember, if you have any errors, please make sure that you check out the whole video step by step before commenting down below. It'd be wonderful if you do drop us a comment to say that it works for you, and this will always work, guys. This will never get revoked, okay? This is the method that I would recommend for every single person. Thank you very much for watching, guys. Make sure that you hit that big red subscribe button, set up the notification bell, and check out the description for other videos that we have on our channel. And as always, I will see you all very, very soon.